This is the story of Seth Kinman. Born September 29th, 1815 in Union County, Pennsylvania to James and Eleanor Kinman, Seth would turn out to be one of California's most popular early settlers, a famous chairmaker and a nationally recognized entertainer. At just over six feet tall, Seth was known for his hunting prowess and his brutality towards bears and Native Americans. Kinman claims to have killed over 800 grizzly bears and boasted killing 50 elk in a single month. Throughout his life, Seth would work as a hotel keeper, a saloon keeper, and a musician who once performed for President Lincoln on a fiddle made from the skull of a mule. Seth would eventually marry and father five children, two of which would pass away along with his wife during the winter of 1852-53. to 53. In 1852, Kinman would relocate to Humboldt County, California, where he would be contracted by Colonel Buchanan to supply Fort Humboldt with elk and bear meat. The grizzly bear population in California at the time was robust. Kinman's son even claims to have once seen a gathering of 40 grizzlies. But by 1868, the last grizzly in Humboldt County had been killed. Around this time, Seth met Methodist Bishop and writer Oscar Penn Fitzgerald on a California steamboat. Fitzgerald would state in his impressions of Kinman in his sketch, The Ethics of Grizzly Hunting, where he presented Kinman as a drunkard who cruelly abused Indians and grizzly bears. Kinman's eyes also left an impression on Fitzgerald. He would later compare Kinman's eyes to those of one of California's worst bandits, Tiburcio Vasquez. He would say of Kinman's eyes, His eyes were nature's special label of one of Milan's creations. Only in two other human beings have I ever seen such eyes as those. It was the eye of a wild beast. The baleful glitter you have seen in the eyes of snakes, panthers, catamounts, or other creatures of the reptile of feline kind. Around the time he was contracted to supply Fort Humboldt, he was using the elk horns collected near his farm every year to create a fence. It was around 1856 that Seth built his first elk horn chair with the help of George Hill, which he then traded for a telescope. Also in 1856, inspired by the election of the 15th President of the United States, who was a fellow Pennsylvanian, Kinman built his first presidential chair saying of the events i killed deer and elk meet up in humboldt county my range is from bear valley into oregon this winter i killed considerable meat so i thought i would take it easy and set about to make this chair with the view of sending it on to washington for old buck after i got it finished though the boys up in our part started enough to travel on so i thought i would try and go on with it to washington myself leaving my mother and children behind and started with nothing but my rifle and powder horn. Nobody has yet sat in this chair and never shall till after the president. With the help of Peter Donahue and Oliver Meredith Rosencraft on May 26, 1857, after an introduction from the Commissioner of Indian Affairs, James Denver, Kinman presented the chair to Buchanan. The president was so pleased that he bought Kinman a rifle and two pistols. In 1861, he advertised a chair that he would present to Napoleon III, but later abandoned the idea due to French involvement in Mexico. Kinman's presentation of an Elkhorn chair to President Abraham Lincoln on November 26, 1864 was recorded by artist Alfred Ward. The drawing shows Lincoln examining Kinman's rifle, which he called Old Cotton Blossom. Kinman also presented a fiddle made from the skull and rib of his favorite mule and played the instrument. Much to the amusement of Lincoln and other spectators, he played Essence of Old Virginia and John Brown on the bones of the mule. Lincoln said that if he could play the fiddle, he would ask him for it. But since he could not, the fiddle would be better off in Mr. Kinman's hands. The following April, Kinman marched in President Lincoln's funeral cortege in Washington. Kinman was allegedly in Ford's theater the night of the assassination and witnessed the murder. He escorted Lincoln's body on its way to burial as far as Columbus, Ohio. On April 26, 1865, the New York Times described Kinman in the funeral cortege in New York City. Much attention was attracted to Mr. Kinman, who walked in a full hunting suit of buckskin and fur, 
with a rifle on his shoulder. Mr. Kinman, who will be remembered, presented to Mr. Lincoln some time ago a chair made of California Elkhorn, and continuing his acquaintance with him, it is said enjoyed quite a long conversation with him the very day before the murder. During his stay on the East Coast, many carte de visite's photographs of Kinman and his chairs were taken by Matthew Brady. Kinman claimed to have paid Brady $2,100 in a three-month period for photos at eight cents apiece, which calculates to an unlikely amount of over 26,000 photographs. Kinman sold these photographs among other places in the U.S. Capitol. He also toured the country performing in his buckskin as a frontier storyteller and a fiddle player. Kinman's tour de force in presidential chairs was presented to President Andrew Johnson on September 8, 1865. Marshal R. Anspach said of the chair. This was intended to surpass all his previous efforts and was made from two grizzly bears captured by Seth. The four legs and claws were those of a huge grizzly and the back and sides ornamented with immense claws. The seat was soft and exceedingly comfortable, but the great feature of the chair was that by touching a cord, the head of the monster grizzly bear with jaws extended would dart out in front from under the seat snapping and gnashing its teeth as natural as life. Now, before concluding this story, let's talk about Kinman's brutality towards Native Americans, which was duly noted by James R. Duff, a fellow 49er who described him as, Hell, he was an avowed enemy of the Red Man. Shot an Indian on sight. Seth always took an Indian along on a hunt, partly to carry the game, but primarily to serve as bear bait. Sometimes he regarded them as human beings, other times only as predatory animals to shoot at. Kinman himself claimed to be an official Indian agent, though there is little evidence that he actually served in that position. Kinman, who owned a farm near Table Bluff, was involved with the Wyot people, a Native American tribe that lives in the Table Bluff region to this day. A key event in Wyot history occurred in 1860 on February 25th to the 26th on Indian Island when over 100 wild were murdered while they slept. At the same time, there were massacres of the wild people at other sites including Table Bluff. Kinman was never specifically identified as one of the murderers and three months later in May of 1860 was elected to represent Bear River at a countywide meeting, ironically to discuss ways to protect white settlers from Native Americans. In 1864, he scouted for Captain William Hall's California Volunteers, which according to Kinman himself, slaughtered and captured Indians, and at one time took as many as 160 captives to Fort Humboldt. Kinman would live out his later years in Table Bluff, California with his family where he owned a hotel and bar. Early in 1888, he accidentally shot himself, below the knee of one leg. The limb had to be amputated and he died from complications. Seth was buried in his buckskin clothes in Table Bluff Cemetery, located in Humboldt County, California. So there you have it, the story of Seth Kinman. An interesting side note to end on, on December 5th, 2018, the Eureka City Council voted unanimously to return the rest of the land on Indian Island to the Wyoke people. And on October 21st, 2019, the city deeded all its land on Indian Island to the Wyoke people, which means they got most of the land back. Uh, the article that I found said they received about 202 acres back. And that's um, a step in the right direction, in my opinion. Um, if you enjoyed this story, please like, share, subscribe, hit that notification bell to be notified for my next video. And uh, this is your humble storyteller, Twisted Hairs, signing out. Peace.